Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time of the day it is you join us for the Tulsa World Scene podcast, affectionately known to all and sundry as Fred. <laughs> uh, I am here with uh, Jimmy Trammell and Grace Wood, my lovely and talented colleagues. Um, and I'm 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 so glad to see them. I'm choking up. So pardon me a minute. <laughs> you know what? We did name this Fred. And as I before everybody logged in, I did see that you had named this actually recurring scene podcast, Fred. So it is the official name now. It, well, un, 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 until we are told otherwise, which um, which may be very soon, perhaps perhaps while we are recording this, if anybody <laughs> is paying close attention. But that's the best we could do for the moment. And so we're going to stick with it. Um, it is, um, we record this at the tail end of uh, the latest bit of, of bad weather that has uh, struck uh, struck the area after uh, we were spared, uh, thanks to the donut hole of snow or donut hole of no snow or anyway, um, we got everybody got got more than their fair share of ice, and so I doubt that any of us have been out and about much. Is that true? And we went straight from the donut to the glaze. Uh, <laughs> um, very well played very I, well played. I, i've been as far as the nearest quick trip which is two miles away uh pretty much otherwise i've just stayed home and let everyone fight it out me too i have been to the mailbox which is a step outside my front door <laughs> um and that's been pretty much it, you know. If I, I if one doesn't if one doesn't have to deal with it, one one shouldn't. But even though it's below freezing, I'm noticing uh, things are starting to melt away a little bit. At least in in, in my uh, in my little corner of the world. Um, uh, so, but you know, w you know, Watching, watching approaching bad weather is uh, after college football probably Oklahoma's number one spectator sport. <laughs> um, <clears throat> when you start hearing um, uh, the various, uh, you know, Danny's and Jerry's and Jimmy's and Travis telling us, you know, that apocalypse is nigh, do you take that as an opportunity to stock up on things, perhaps? you shouldn't stock up on or plan to watch uh, shows that maybe ordinarily you wouldn't have a chance to spend a lot of time with. Not, not that, it, not that you're not, not that it takes away from the marvelous job you do writing stories for the Tulsa world, which you can uh, find at any uh, fine newsstand and online at TulsaWorld.com. I don't want to say that we're all slackers in that regard. So <laughs> Grace. Yeah. Ladies first. Ladies first. <laughs> um, yeah, this kind of snowy, icy weather and the fact that my boyfriend is out of town and he's in Hawaii has really given me the opportunity to delve into some of my favorite like guilty pleasure TV shows that he just can't stand. So um, I've been watching a lot of Riverdale, which is based on the Archie comics. And um, it's a pretty corny show, but... <laughs> It brings me a lot of comfort and also um, Grey's Anatomy. I mean, I think they're on like their 18th season now, but it's one of those shows you can just put on and you don't really even have to pay attention to it. You can just kind of witness it and it's fine. So that's, <laughs> wow. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I um, that's what I've been watching. What about you, Jimmy? Well, I, I was just going to ask. So, so you, you're keeping away from like um, the Lifetime Network movies of, you know, the the, the 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 girlfriend left behind while the, while the boyfriend goes off to Hawaii and she plans this you know horrible revenge for when he gets back. <laughs> yes, I've been staying away from those. I'm very happy for him. He picked a great time to leave. <laughs> okay. Well, he, he could have picked a better time when he could have taken you with with him. But oh well. <laughs> we won't we won't delve any more into your pro for your personal life. So. <laughs> I, I don't have a lot of a uh, heck of a lot of spare time because I've got a a giant uh, side project in addition to my real work. So I, but my couple hours a night that I can just kind of wind down, I just keep binging the same Rockford Files DVDs over and over and over. This may be my third time or fourth time just watching the Rockford Files from start to finish all six seasons. 
Uh, but I'm just, it's also on Get TV twice in a row at 7 and 8 p.m. weeknights. And so I've discovered I like the randomness of what are they going to show me tonight as opposed to picking a DVD and watching it in order. It just seems it's like a song on the radio. If you're playing a cassette or that's a long time ago or a CD, it feels like you're not getting any surprises. But if you just listen to the radio, you get surprised once in a while. That 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 serendipitous sort of thing. Yeah, I I, I there have been <clears throat> relatively few shows that I have made it a point to see from beginning to end. Um, one of them is uh, Barney Miller. Hmm. Um, there's a, a, a network on one of the satellite, I think it's called FETV, Family Entertainment TV. And they would do uh, two episodes at like 11 and 11.30 at night. And I realized they were doing them in sequence. And so I just set up the tape to tape them and and, and would would plow through, through all of them. I did the same with um, the old Perry Mason shows with Raymond Burr. The thing about that is that was back when they were doing 20 to 24 shows a season rather than the 13 or six or whatever, you know. So there's like 230 episodes. And when you think about how much time, you you know, you, you, I remember reading stories about uh, Raymond Burr would basically live on the, on the soundstage because he couldn't, he didn't have time to go home because he had to, you know, he was on, on, on camera all the time. But, um, and I go, I, you know, when, when all else fails, I can find one of those some, somewhere to watch. So I do, do go, go for that. Well, now that things are, are beginning to thaw, is there, um, um, is there a place that either of you are, are that's going to be, other than Quick Trip, that's going to be your, 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 your first place to go to say, I am, fr I am free from ice and snow and I'm going to live my life the way I should. Mm hmm. It would just feel good to eat anywhere except home, you know? I don't <laughs> care where it is. Just anywhere besides home. True. I agree. Um, my mind immediately went to, like, activities. <laughs> and okay. I really want to go to Purple Glaze once the weather clears up and everything's fine. I, as you can see, I have a lot of plants behind me. So I really want to make, like, a ceramic bowl to put some of my plants in because yeah, they're in pots right now, but they're kind of boring. So I was thinking it would be fun to like go make something. So I think I'll do that. Okay. Well, and specifically, I'd like to make it out to the Outsiders house on Friday to see uh, uh, see Thomas Howell, now Tommy Howell, who's having an album listening party out there uh, Friday evening. I think it would be interesting to see him back at the old place again. They're also, I don't know if it was in the magazine, but I know it's on their their website, there was a, a fairly comprehensive uh, story about S.E. Hinton and the Outsiders um, that you, Jimmy, I'm sure you probably were, were aware of. Smithsonian uh, Magazine wrote it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was it was a fascinating thing about, about how uh, the last thing she wants to talk about is the Outsiders, and that's what everybody um, um, knows her for. And I, there, I, think, I think it was the one of the last things she said, you know, I'm, I'm known for the very first thing I ever wrote, mm -hmm. uh, but it's better to be known for one thing than, you know, never published or never known at all. So, and so it's I, a love hate thing. I get what she says. I mean, if you're uh, name any band in the world, you get tired of playing your hit over and over and over again. So, but it's how you make your money. Yeah. So all right. Well, um, what else we got coming up for? Um, uh, oh, I, I, I do want to ask you one thing, uh, Jimmy. You did our, our big stories on the uh, the Reba McIntyre um, mm -hmm. store, restaurant, complex opening uh, in Atoka. Um, did they feed you anything? Were you able to sample what was on the menu? Is it is it is it worth a trip to Atoka, that Paris of southeastern Oklahoma? While I was there during the time they, of the press conference and the time I had to have a story in for deadline, I had to leave and go file somewhere else to get internet. But uh, they brought around little trays of different slider type sandwiches. 
uh, burgers, barbecue bologna, and those were very good. I mean, I, I like to go back and try something on the menu of my own choosing, but the slider, little slider sandwiches were great. Okay. Do you think it might become as much of a pilgrimage site as uh, the Pioneer Woman? I think it has to be. It's it's midpoint between Tulsa and Dallas. And a jillion cars, exaggerating only slightly, pass through Atoka every day. And now you've given somebody a reason to actually stop instead of going to the stoplight and keep going. Or 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 being pulled over. But anyway, no. Um we'll we'll bear we'll we'll we'll, we'll bear we'll bury that 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 horrible memory. Um well uh, beyond that, what what do we have coming up for uh, this weekend? Grace, what what's what what have you managed to do about home and garden in uh, in the midst of ice and snow? Um, well, I have my usual World of Homes package, um, just featuring different cool homes that are on the market right now in Tulsa, as well as my column about like home and garden events that people can go to. Um, but I'm getting a little bit of extra time instead of my usual feature story on Saturday. I think I'm going to get a couple more days to write. A story that I've been working on about people from Tulsa's most interesting estate sale finds. So like crazy, wacky things that they've encountered at estate sales. I've got some really cool stories so far. So it's taking a little longer, but that'll probably be out either next week or next weekend. So everybody keep on the lookout for that. I'm digging are, that. Are, one. I'd love to read that. It's are, really are, are, so far. Are you an estate sale uh, uh, aficionado? Do you go out yourself or... I've been to a couple, but just hearing these stories and getting to know these people who frequent them, I want to start going to a lot more because Tulsa apparently is just a huge hub for estate sales and we've got some really cool stuff here. So I've joined the Facebook groups. I'm I'm on the email list and I think I'm going to start going way more. So it's cool. Okay. I, 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 I'm, 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 I have an odd relationship with with garage sale, estate sales, and, and and the like, I I, I while I, I I know that they have they have a purpose to me personally, I feel a bit vulturish, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and uh, um, but but I you know that that that's just that's just a personal thing. I don't I don't believe that people that other people feel that way or are that way, but that's just kind of the way I feel. It's just a little. A little creepy in a, in in a, in a way to to to, to do that, but um, yeah, I've, I, 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 I've, I'll just put this: I've donated to a lot of, of of sales, so there are people out there with some of my old stuff somewhere that I don't want to have to think about either. So anyway, uh, Jimmy, what's coming up for you on Friday? We've got a story about uh, the newest film from Tulsa filmmaker John Swab. It's called Little Dixie. Uh, it's a hardcore crime revenge thriller, no holds barred. John Swab does not make namby-pamby soft movies. He makes uh, full bore, uh, never know what to expect, uh, probably going to have some violence, all kind of stuff, movies. Uh, he makes the kind of movies that he loved, which are like 70s B movies, which he feels like are better than a movies in many cases. Uh, and uh, and he has a lead actor in this one, Frank Grillo, who's kind of in his uh, stock company now. He's very Charles Bronson-ish, and he's the main character in this film. Okay. Oh, on Sunday, also, we have a Grammy preview of Here Are the Oklahomans Who Have a Chance to Win Grammys uh, Sunday Night. How, 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 how many of them are there? Uh, uh, not 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 Grammys, but but Oklahomans that might have the chance. Not, not a lot this year. Legitimately, probably about three or four, and then beyond that, there are some loose connections where that person doesn't win a Grammy, but they maybe wrote some songs on somebody else's album. The big ones are Zach Bryan and Reba McIntyre, the big names. Okay. All right. Well, um, I earlier made some comment about my own little corner of the world, which kind of ties in with what. Uh, I've got coming for Sunday. Tulsa Ballet has is creating their own version of the ballet Cinderella uh, with a Prokofiev score by and with uh, Andrew McNichol uh, choreographing. Um, it's they going to be a big and lavish uh, production with lots of lots of magic, lots of romance, just in time for uh, Valentine's Day. 
um, that uh, also will be appearing Sunday in uh, your local Tulsa world, as we said, available at fine newsstands and convenience stores everywhere and at, online at tulsaworld.com. Uh, well, that will probably do it for this week, unless we can think of something else to say, and probably we don't want to. So we'll just say thank you all for putting up with us, and we'll gladly see you later. See you, Fred. Bye. <laughs>